In this video, we're going to look at how you can implement the binary search algorithm on the guess the number game that we've been looking at in class uh, using the numbers from 1 to 1000. So for our first round, we start off with a number that we've guessed. So we're going to go with our number being 273. So that's our secret number that if this was a real game, the other person would be guessing. But let's look at how this works with the binary search algorithm. So we start with our lowest possible value being 1, and our upper value being 1000. So that's our lower limit and our upper limit. And of course we have all the values that are in between. The binary search revolves around trying to always pick the middle value in our range. So our range is 1 to 1000, so we're looking for our middle value. But what is that middle value? Now, at the moment, it's pretty obvious. We're probably going to pick 500, but let's make sure we understand the math. So the idea here is it's our lower limit plus our upper limit divided by 2. So that would give us 1 plus 1,000 divided by 2. 1,001 divided by 2. And what we'll see here is we actually technically get a decimal value. Now, we can't have a decimal in our guess. We are looking for whole numbers. So we're just going to round that uh, down in this case to 500. Now I know some of you are sitting there thinking no 0.5 you always round up. Well in this case we're just going to round down to the nearest whole number. It technically doesn't matter if you round up but we're just going to stick with this rounding down in this example. So our middle value becomes 500. That is our guess. So we're now asking is 273 or is our number that we have in our mind greater than 500? You could go here with the less than option, but I'm just going to stick with the greater than option in this video. So is 273 the number we're thinking of greater than 500? And in this case, of course, it's not. So what does that mean for us? Well, everything from 500 up, or actually 501 up, is now gone. It is not greater than 500, Therefore, we cannot have 501, 502, all the way up to 1,000. So we have halved the possible values. So now our new lower limit will be 1, and our upper limit will be 500. Remembering that the last question was greater than 500, so 500 is still in the mix. It could be 500. And of course, all the values in between. So round 2, looking at 1 as our lower limit, 500 as our upper limit, and of course everything in between. What's our middle value? Let's do the math again. Lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2. The math seems pretty straightforward. Again, we've got a decimal, and so again, we're just going to round down to the nearest whole number, as I've been doing through this video, and that means we're looking for 250. So we ask ourselves again, is our number, 273 in this case, greater than 250? In this case, it is. So now we have everything below 250 being wiped out. So we have all the numbers from 250 downwards. This time it does include 250. So now our new upper limit is 500 and our new lower limit is 251 because we've said our number is greater than 250. So it can't be 250 anymore. And of course, all the numbers in between. So round three is looking like this, 251 as our lower limit to 500 as our upper limit still. Again, we look for our middle value. We do the math. In this case, we've still got a decimal, so we're going to round down again to 375. So we're now asking, is our number 273 greater than 375? 273 is, of course, not greater than 375, so it is false. So now we wipe out everything above. So our new lower limit stays as what, 251, and our new upper limit stays as 375, and we go again. Just to save a bit of time and space now, I'm not going to go through every single step. I'm just going to show each of the remaining rounds on the one screen. So we have 251 to 375. Our middle number is 313, rounded if needed. So we ask the question, no it's not, so we wipe out everything here. Next round, we have 251 now to 313. 
middle number becomes 282. Ask our question. No, it's not. So again, we wipe out everything above. We now get to the next round, 251 going to 282. Our middle number is 266. We ask our question. In this case, yes, it is. So now we're wiping out everything on the tail end. And we keep going through our questions, through our middle numbers, asking each time and wiping out what we need. And this way is a reasonable way of doing it if you need to do some working out. There's nothing wrong with drawing it up and drawing a grid. Okay, and we finally work our way down till we get to something that is very, very close. So here we've asked, is 273 greater than 272? Yes, it is. All right, it is. So that gives us a range at the moment of 273 up to 274. We've actually only got two possible values. And that's really important because we are doing a binary search. So we expect to eventually get to two possible values. Here we have 273 to 274. I'm going to stick with the lower end each time. Uh, and of course, I don't, I'm pretending I don't know that the number is 273. So I'm going to say, is the number greater than 273? So is 273 greater than 273? And of course, the answer to that would be no. The number is 273, but it's not greater than. So technically, above that. So I now have a range of just 273 to 273. I only have one number left. So of course, I can now guess that my number is 273. So how do we show that on the worksheet? How do we show this in a, a grid, basically? So here I have the grid filled out. My number at the top that I was guessing towards 273. Round one, I started with one going up to a thousand. That means I have a thousand possible values. My middle guess was 500 and it's not true, it's false. Round two, I had one to 500. That means I have 500 values to guess from. 273 greater than 250. No, it's not. Sorry, yes, it is. Apologies. And we keep going through. Eventually, we got down to the 11th guess, the 11th round. 273 to 273. There's only one possible value and therefore is the last number. It must be the correct guess. One thing you might want to notice is this value count is here for a reason. If we look at that and we go from the top to the bottom, you should see that they're basically halving each time, which is what we expect to happen with a binary count, or sorry, binary search. We started with a thousand possible values. Round two, we had 500 possible values, then 250, then 125. Around this point here, we do get a little bit out. It's not strictly halving each time, but that's because we have that rounding error. So, but because we're rounding, it's not exactly, but that's okay. It's still basically plus or minus halving each time. We've gone down to 32, 16, halving again, halving again, and you can see we halve all the way down till we end up with just that one value. So that's sort of proving to us, if you like, that we have in fact been using the binary search because we have been halving the possible options each time. And that's pretty much how you do this particular task. So again, think about your upper and lower limit. Do the math if need be to work out what your middle number is. Use that number. Be consistent. Make sure you get your numbers right. And if you use the value count column, then you should see approximately within plus or minus one that you're halving every single step that you do. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this has helped you to go through this worksheet and this task. Uh, if not, watch it a few more times. And if you're still struggling, ask for some help.